Hi everybody, uh, welcome to the nonlinear uh, regression, the log transformation portion of this. So um, sort of the second half of the nonlinears that we talk about. We're going to look at three different models here. And then if you want additional practice, including the quadratic, I have another video that walks you through each of the four. So if it's really not coming to you or um, it's, it's still a concept you want to further, you can go and watch this video as well. But um, we'll go through each of these three. So hopefully you have the university data, you've gotten comfortable with this. Again, rather than have you go and select all the data again, um, I went ahead and did this for you. One big thing to make sure you worry about, and I made this mistake early, is um, anytime you have data that you want to use the natural log with, it cannot be zero or negative, right? The natural log has to be positive. Um, and so that can cause problems if you have any variables that uh, have negative or zero values. But in this case, I've made sure that it doesn't. Um, um, no free colleges and no zero enrollment colleges are, are in our data here. Okay, so what we need to do is, um, I like to go ahead and again figure out, so it's the same as the quadratic, we're going to see test of tuition fees has a nonlinear impact on total enrollment. Um, and so this is going to be my x or independent variable. This is going to be my um, y variable in its sort of linear format. Um, and so if we just wanted a linear relationship, we could just run this. Here's my y, here's my x, go. Um, but what if we think it's nonlinear? And, and please make sure that you know that um, we can add a bunch of different variables, other things that we think impact enrollment to these models. I'm just doing this for simple, um, for a simple case so you understand, uh, but uh, we're, we're likely missing a lot of things. I would worry about admitted variable bias um, a lot in here, but this we're just going to go simple. So um, I'll start with model one because it gives us everything we need. So this is saying we need a log version of our dependent variable and a log version of our independent variable. Um, for the model. We don't have that yet, so we have to create it. And so I'm going to go ln, so I'm just going to title this natural log of enrollment, and then I'll title column D um, ln of tu oops, tuition. And again, you can title it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter to me as long as you know what each are. And then just like the formula kind of says, we need to find the natural log of these. And, and Excel does this for us really easy. So we'll equals ln, we'll open the parentheses, and I'll click on, so for ln enrollment, I want the natural log of that school's enrollment, so close the parentheses. And now it's really easy. So all I have to do is um, drag to the right because that formula will move to the right one. And then if you highlight both of these, double click down, and we're set. We actually have everything we need. Um, we just have to make sure we select the right variables for these models. So let's go through here, log, log. So I'm going to want ln of enrollment as my y, ln of tuition as my x. And so we'll do data analysis. We'll do regression. Again, yours might be blank, but I'll click on ln of enrollment, control or command shift down. That's my y variable. And then my x variable is now going to be ln of tuition. Control or command shift down. There, hence the log log. Again, make sure you have the labels checked. Um, you can put this on a new worksheet if you want. I'm going to try and put all three of these in the same spot. Um, so we can talk about them afterwards. So I'll put this, um, let's do G, enter, do OK. It might yell at us. Yeah, this thing's just a little bit over, over top here. And so I'm going to go ahead and label this the log, log, output. And maybe I'll highlight it that way. Um, uh, what was I doing? Um, I'm sorry. Uh, then we can come back and talk about these in just a little bit. And so, yeah, I want to merge and this. All right, so now um, let's make sure, let's now go get the log lin or the exponential model. So it needs a log version of my y variable. And then the right of the dash means a linear version of my x variable. So here's my log of y and then just normal x. And so now we'll do data, data analysis regression. Your y range should already be L of enrollment, so you don't actually have to change anything. You can if you want in the practice, but now our x range is just tuition and fee. So I'll click there, control or command shift down, I'll hit enter, and then I don't want to overwrite this. I want to place it somewhere else, so I'll click, uh, maybe I'll put this output here. I'll uh, put it um, here so I can kind of talk about it. So I'll do enter, I'll do OK. All right, and so now this is going to be our log win output. And again, I'll bold it and um, do this, and I'm going to come back and talk about this. And so the last one is lin log. So I need a linear version of my y variable and a log version of my x variable. All right, so linear version of my y. And then where's my 
log x, so it'll be ln of tuition, because that's ln of x. And so now we just have to go select those. So we'll do data, data analysis, regression. All right, and so I have to change both of these. So the linear version of enrollment, enter. Okay, and now I need the log version of tuition, right? The log of x, which is just this one. Control or command shift down. And then make sure I have my labels, and again, I'm going to put this one um, right. Oh, yeah, let's put it here. And now we can again change this. So lin log. Uh, yep. And then we can do bold. And sorry, I just have this. Um, sort of yeah. So now let's talk through each of these. So the log log is kind of the easiest one because this coefficient is now just in elasticity. Both our units for x and y are in terms of percent. And so if I wanted to interpret this coefficient, again, I would worry about omitted variable bias and stuff like that, but um, for now, let's assume we don't have it just for, for fun. So how I would interpret this con coefficient is, I would say, so as tuition, just the x variable, I don't have to say log of tuition because the log just turns it into percent when I interpret it. As tuition increases by 1%, um, we can say enrollment, our y variable, decreases by, and then again, because I decreases because it's negative, by 0 0.55861% uh, on average and all else constant. We don't actually have anything else to hold the constant. But that, that makes sense, right? As tuition goes up, less people come there. Um, and so that's an interesting one. Uh, for the log len, so this one's a little bit harder uh, because... Whenever we only have one side with the log, we have to actually do something to this coefficient when we interpret it. When we make predictions, we don't have to. Um, but when it's a log lin, um, I always worry when I see log here, but this one I'm going to have to, I, I just put a little reminder here, multiply the coefficient by 100 when interpreting it. And so it's talking about this. You don't need it to make predictions or anything like that. Um, and so that's a little bit nicer. And then um, notice that the log is on the left and the lint is on the right. So my original, my x variable is going to keep its normal unit. So tuition and fees is going to be in dollars. So we'll say as tuition, and you can write fees if you want, increases by $1. Again, because it doesn't have the log with it. It just keeps its normal units. Um, so enrollment, all right, so this is negative, so we'll say decreases by, and then it's this number, but remember, um, we need to multiply it by 100. And so if you want, um, Excel's not super lovely doing this, but if you want to get it, oh, it keeps it in scientific notation. Um, so decreases by, and so what you can do is you can write, um, let's do two decimals here, so just for simply, simplicity's sake here. Um, we'll say it decreases by, so you can write it as 2.27 um, e to the negative fifth um, times 100. Uh, or you can just move this decimal, so it's just saying move it left five spots. Instead, now you can just do e to the negative three. Or, right, that's just the same thing as saying by 0. Um, zero, so it's three spots, zero, zero, um, we have two, two, seven percent. And again, I've multiplied that number by a hundred, um, just for your ease. And so one, two, three, yeah. Right. And again, on average and all else constant. So these take a little bit of practice. You just got to remember to multiply that number by a hundred. It might be easier in Excel just to do equals and then do this times 100. I mean, it makes life a little bit easier so you can see where that kind of goes in there. And again, I used percent because at my y variable I ran was the natural log of enrollment. And so um, something interesting you could do here is no school is ever going to talk about a $1 increase in tuition. Um, but because this is linear in that portion, you can multiply this by sort of any, like, tens, and it would still work. So you could say as tuition increases by, I don't know, let's say $1,000. That would probably make more sense. All right, then enrollment would 
that decreases by, and again, just so a thousand, so you'd move this decimal over three spots, so 2.27%, uh, and then on average and all else constant. And again, there's something else constant. Uh, but this is more of like a, a common sense one that, that makes you think like, oh, I've thought about this, rather than like a $1 increase tuition. Like you take that to a president, no one's ever gonna know. Or they'll be like, why are you telling me $1? Like, make it into sort of a more comprehensive understanding. Okay, sorry, that one took a little bit longer than I thought. So the last one is the Lin log. And so again, I worry because I only have log on one side. Uh, and so this one's kind of the flip case where since I multiplied by 100 in the log Lin model, uh, when it's Lin log, I need to make sure I divide the coefficient by, by 100 when interpreting it. Right, not when making predictions or anything like that, but only when interpreting it. So what we'll do here, so if we go here, let's see, I'll highlight this again. So how I would interpret this coefficient is, I would say, so as tuition increases by, by well, the units we're going to use. So notice we use the natural log of tuition, and so the natural log turns the units into percent. So we'll say by 1%. Uh, my dependent variable was enrollment, so my enrollment will decrease, because it's negative, by that 683 divided by 100. So it would be 6. Um, let's say 84. And then what units? Well, I had linear enrollment, and so it just keeps its normal one by, so people. And then on, and again on average, and all else constant. All right, so there's a lot going on in these models, and to make it even harder, um, I can't use the goodness of fit measures to compare this model, right, LN, or to the linear log model, to compare versus either the log LIN or the log log, because that last model uses enrollment as my dependent variable, whereas those first two use LN of enrollment. Right, and so those are two different things. These goodness of fit measures that they're giving us this is in terms of how accurate I am to predict the natural log of enrollment. Same thing here. Whereas this is right, how accurate, how well I'm doing in predicting actual just enrollment. And so um, we talk more about this specifically in class. You would actually have to calculate uh, a new adjusted R squared um, or and or standard error if you wanted to compare like which of these models white might be the best and i'm not going to spend any time on this video talking about it um but just letting you know that and there's a video that that i'll post that also talks about this process but it's actually a lot easier than any other statistical program besides um, excel um, but yeah we would want to look and find like which one of these is most accurate if we were going to take it and um, like present it to a board or a financial committee or something like that um, I hope this was helpful. There's a lot going on in these models. So if you want more practice, uh, make sure you go back to, you can go back to this sheet and watch another video. So it's a link. You won't have the data set to that um, unless you have the textbook that's associated with, which is mine, but if you're not watching this in my class or um, taking a different class, uh, you won't have it, but it does walk through like how to interpret the coefficient to get more practice. Um, and how to make predictions from these models. So there's a lot that goes in, especially that log on the left um, can be troublesome. Um, let me know if you need uh, any help.